This video will contain spoilers up to chapter 1023. You've been warned. Hello my Nakamotachi, this is Joy Girl, and I want to talk about a topic that's been the source of much discussions since chapter 1023, which is the idea of whether someone's lineage and inherited will undermines their achievements and abilities. And I know we've already discussed this briefly during our chapter reactions and chapter reviews, but I wanted to provide a dedicated space where we can talk about this because I am really interested in everyone's thoughts and because I can also see that this is a topic that continues to come up. So this isn't the first time that this topic has been brought up, even prior to recent chapters, the introduction of of characters like Joy Boy and the reveal of the giant straw hat at Marajoie raised the question of whether Luffy is the reincarnation of another influential individual. And this became even more prominent during the raid with Who's Who's reveal that the Gomu Gomu no Mi may be a special devil fruit with more importance than we realize, which begged the question of whether Luffy has inherited the fruit from another significant character. And chapter 1023 gave us a lot to talk about in this area with multiple characters. Because in this chapter, it was hinted that there may be a possible further the connection between Zoro and the Shimotsuki family from Wano, with personal links being made to the late Damiyo Ushimaru, as well as to Yuma, a legendary hero of Wano. Whilst Oda had given us hints about some relationship to this Wano family previously, for an SBS where he revealed that the village where Zoro had grown up was founded by one of the Shimotsuki, in this chapter, he went even further to suggest that Zoro himself reminds those who knew Ushimaru personally and held previously unknown additional details about Yuma. There were also suggestions made about Sanji, his ability to generate flames from his leg in his Diable Jamba attack, something we've seen can extend to his entire body in Thriller Bark, was previously explained to be the result of Sanji's burning passion. During the Whole Cake Island arc, we were told that the modifications completed on the Vinsmoke children were unsuccessful in Sanji's case and that he was completely human, devoid of any sort of superpower. But then after chapter 1023, many within the fanbase are now leaning towards the conclusion that Judge Judge's experimentations resulted in some latent potential within Sanji, of which the full extent is now finally being drawn out, perhaps because of his use of the Wraith suit. And with the suggestion of King's Lunarian race being revealed in the same chapter, as well as being mentioned within the same conversation with Queen about Sanji's ability to generate fire, naturally the assumption has been that the modifications conducted by Judge involved King's Lunarian race. And then in the same chapter, we also saw Momonosuke in his matured dragon form, as well as a suggestion that Mom Momo's human adult form will strongly resemble Odin, which has resulted in a great level of hype and expectations for Momo's character. And whilst we're so focused on Momo's human form likely looking like Odin and him being Odin's son, I haven't seen the question posed about the effect of the maturation on Kaido's lineage factor, which has modified or been fused with Momo's. Because it's quite likely that the effect of the Juku Juku no Mi will also extend to the abilities of Momo as a dragon as a result of the devil fruit which he consumed, creating from Kaido's own lineage factor. We at least saw that his dragon form, appearance-wise, is a menacing sight, which really got fans hyped up. But is his dragon form merely for show? Does Momo even have full control of his dragon form and his abilities? Would he actually be able to fare well against Kaido, considering he lacks the proper training? And is his mature body enough to even out the playing field? And if he is, what does this say about one's lineage and inherited power? Because if we saw Momo fight evenly against Kaido or be as strong as Odin going forward, this would add weight to the idea that your lineage has a lot to do with your strength as an adult. And a common question I've been asked is whether Momo will exhibit Odin's level of strength, which implies an expectation that by sheer fact of Momo being Odin's son and having the blood of one of, if not Wano's greatest samurai, Momo will also possess that same level of greatness. But but what all of this hype has overshadowed is the question of whether the results of the Juku Juku no Mi, which is to mature or to ripen, simply affects one's physical form or also heightens the combat ability and capabilities of the individual. And if so, will this be because the raw potential of Momo's lineage has been multiplied or will this be the result of the extrapolation of Momo's current ability due to his own efforts and training? And to explain what I mean, let me paint a picture for you. We know that Momo has been training before the raid and if we were to say that he was training for 3 hours per day, would the results of the Juku Juku no Mi have extrapolated that amount of time over 28 years? And in this way, I think we can provide another argument than just supposing that his lineage as a Kazuki, or even artificially from Kaido through his Devil Fruit, is the source of Momo's developed strength, which would then be dismissing the possibility of the Juku Juku no Mi recognizing Momo's own strength which he's worked on himself. So I'm really interested in what Oda has in store for us for Momo, because 
because what we see from him may further clarify our understanding of this topic. But for now, I think we've seen plenty from the other characters to form an understanding that one's lineage or even inherited will doesn't equate to borrowed power and strength. Because if we're talking about someone's lineage playing a factor in someone's ability, then there is no one better to look at than Luffy, who is the poster child of having an epic family, but still remains as proof of the result of hard work and determination. Luffy's grandfather is one of the strongest characters we know who doesn't possess any devil fruit abilities and is a high-ranking marine officer considered the hero of the navy. His dad is the most wanted man in the world and is expected to be one of the strongest. However, when we're introduced to Luffy, he's a young and relatively weak boy. He was powerless against Higuma. And we came to find out that it was Garp's tough love training in the forest that formed much of the basis for Luffy's overwhelming strength. Even with hints that the Gomu Gomu no Mi may be more significant than its initial portrayal, it still remains that it was Luffy who maximized its potential. It doesn't change the fact that in the hands of a less creative and wild individual, the Gomu Gomu no Mi would not be an impressive addition to one's combat inventory. If we look at Zoro, even if he ends up being the descendant of a significant family, this doesn't take away from Zoro's hard work and his drive to be the best swordsman. The fact remains that much of Zoro's motivations is based on the promise that he made to Kuina to become the world's greatest swordsman for the both of them. A promise that he made after he lost to Kuina time and time again and then never had the chance to prove himself against her. We have seen the insane extent to which this guy trains. And this isn't to say that I don't understand the perspective that some may still have with liking Zoro to be completely unrelated to any significant figure, being solely his own unique character with no important ancestry. But at the least, this connection, if confirmed, won't won't take away from Zoro's own efforts. Now Sanji. Sanji's a bit more complicated, because on one hand, if we're talking strictly about his ancestry, Judge himself isn't naturally a physically gifted combatant, but has one of the most scientifically gifted minds. So if Sanji has any sort of combat advantage owed to his lineage, it won't necessarily be due to his ancestry, but because of an artificial modification to his lineage. But if we do find out that Judge's enhancements on Sanji were successful and were only delayed, this is still the basis for an argument that Sanji's strength is owed to his lineage, artificial or not. But like Luffy and Zoro, I don't think this should take away from Sanji himself, especially to the extent of his fire generating abilities. Because what we've seen so far are only in relation to Diable Jamba. Apart from Sanji commenting that his body felt off, there's been nothing to suggest that he's also developing an exoskeleton or losing emotions like the rest of his siblings. So even if Sanji is revealed to have some genetic modification that becomes the answer to why he's able to generate fire, I would personally prefer Diable Jamba to remain unexplained, but if it isn't, I won't really have an issue with that. Sanji's already mostly handicapped as a fighter. He only uses his legs. So if the extent of the modification is his fire, then I think we can just treat fire as Sanji's weapon. Luffy and Momo have their devil fruits and Zoro has his swords. Sanji has fire. And similar to the idea that Luffy is mastering his use of his devil fruit and Zoro his swordsmanship through training, Sanji's power creep can be explained in this way. Now I think you get my drift, but if we were to look at another example, which I think perfectly encapsulates this from the other end of the spectrum, then there's no better character who proves that genes don't have anything to do with how strong one can become than Sabo. Sabo was the son of a detestable noble who wasn't portrayed to be physically strong in any particular way. But through his training along with Luffy and Ace, and then further with the Revolutionary Army, Sabo has become a very physically capable fighter in his own right irrespective of his family lineage. And we know this to be a core concept within the series, which was portrayed beautifully through Luffy's other sworn brother. Ace's entire character arc was about realizing that he is his own person, independent of Roger. That ultimately, it doesn't matter who your father is. The fact that an individual should be and is free to choose their own destiny is a running theme in One Piece. The response of Luffy to any mention of his impressive ancestry has always been nonchalant. Sanji outright denied the influence of his father, and we can more or less expect the same from Zoro who won't pay any mind to his lineage. And I think this is what we can expect as the story continues. Irrespective of whatever connection we may find to our characters and the significant heritage, this will not be done in a way to take away from who they are as characters that we've come to know and respect. They will always be the characters we fell in love with. But let me know your thoughts by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to like and share the video and please do subscribe because there are plenty more One Piece content that I would love to discuss with you. You can also join our Joyfully Discord server 
server, or even become a patron, which will give you special roles in said Discord server. On that note, thank you to our patrons who help support the channel. This is Joy Girl, and I'll see you again soon.